I have an opinion on this matter. Well, by all means, share it with the squad. Hey everybody, Steven here. Today I'm doing my review for the Logitech G560 speakers. So typically I actually have other lights that are illuminating my desk here. Right now this is just the G560 speakers here so you can actually tell what my setup looks like with just the lights off of the speakers. So with this video we're actually going to talk about the specs first. I'm going to talk about the things that I like about this, the things that I don't like about this, and then we'll kind of wrap the video up here. And I'm actually going to showcase mainly video of me tinkering with the settings, playing games, things like that, because you guys just don't want this thing in the background. You really want to see what does this look like when it's using things like light sync or any of the other lighting effects with this. So before we get into that, though, I actually have the first sponsor for this channel that I've had, and it's actually from a local podcast. So we're actually going to roll kind of their little commercial here and then we'll cut back and we'll get into the specs here hi hi do you like podcasts about nerd culture or serious life events what about a YouTube show where we review local restaurants well then come on over to super villain obituary presents you can google us or find us on YouTube yeah, YouTube. Also, the podcasts are wherever you listen to them. We're on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube. So, cool. Just search and subscribe to Super Villain Obituary Presents. Back to you. Back, back, back to you. Okay, uh, that was their commercial. Let's go ahead and get to the specs now. So the Logitech speakers come with two speakers and a subwoofer. The speakers connect to the subwoofer via a VGA cable. And a micro USB cable connects into the subwoofer. And then at the other end of that is a USB cable that connects to a port on your computer. This is 240 watts. And I didn't notice any distortion at full volume. This has a sound pressure level of 97 decibels at max volume. These feature Bluetooth and a G button, which is customizable in the G Hub. You can find these on the right speaker, as well as the volume buttons, the power button, and then an auxiliary plug-in. You can find the Bluetooth connecting button over here as well. There are two zone lighting per speaker with 16.8 million colors. This features 7.1 surround sound that you can customize in G-Hub as well. All right, so now that we've covered all of the stats, let's talk about G-Hub, which is essentially where you're going to control all of the lighting and the EQ settings for the speakers. So when I initially got these speakers, I ran off the old software. It is just not user friendly in my opinion. I definitely recommend installing G-Hub and utilizing that to actually control everything with this. Everything is much more streamlined and it's just an easier experience in terms of changing the EQ settings and the lights themselves. All right, so I have this set up, so I actually did a screen capture and then I videoed myself. So you guys get to see both, both using the software and then what it looks like when you're doing that. So we have different settings here. We have fixed color cycle, breathing, audio sampler, and then light sync. And that's gonna be the big one that everybody's gonna to wanna to see here. But before we get to that, let's look at some of these. Fixed is pretty self-explanatory. When we go to cycle here, you get to change the rate and then the brightness with that, which is really, really cool. You get to sync those up. So sometimes maybe they're a little bit off. If you want to try to sync those together, you can. And obviously, if it's crazy fast, maybe that's, I don't know, maybe you're at a rave. <laughs> I don't think that's something that you're going to do necessarily all the time, especially if you're playing a game. But you can slow that down, which is really, really cool. And if it ends up feeling too bright, you can turn that down to a lower setting, which is cool. I personally really like breathing. With this same thing, I get to actually change the rate. Now I'm going to choose the colors that I want with this, right? But then I get to change the rate that they're coming and going. And this would, would be where the sync option is gonna be really, really good because if they're off and you don't want them to be, you just simply click that button. It's going to get those to actually match up together because otherwise you're trying to figure out the exact rate that it needs to be on both of them at the exact same time. 
After that, we have audio sampler, which is really, really cool. So same thing, you're gonna pick the different colors that you want, and then you get to play a song with this, or if it's just your game music, based off the colors you've chosen, then it's going to do that. And you actually get to go into the advanced settings as well and dictate, is it gonna do it on the bass only? Is it gonna do it on these different pitches? And depending upon the game, Perhaps you may tweak these settings to better match that game. Doom is a perfect example of this. So this is something that you get to tweak as well, which is really, really cool. I like the fact that you get to really customize this as much as you want. And it just creates a better experience dependent upon what you're doing. Whether I'm just listening to music or I'm playing a game or I'm watching a trailer or I'm watching TV shows, whatever it may be, you get to make this the experience that you want which is really, really cool. And we have fixed, what you saw there, versus reactive. Reactive is really based off the sounds. Fixed is it's just going to kind of pulse, which is what you're seeing right now. Reactive is more based off those high and low pitches with this. So if we have those high and low pitches, like I said, Doom is a perfect example of this. That's going to really be the area where the customization is going to matter. And they actually had presets for Doom, Destiny 2, No Man's Sky, I think Wolfenstein and there's some couple other ones, but I've had some problems with those that we'll talk about here in a little bit. Beyond that, we have screen sampling, and that's going to be the big one that everybody wants to see. Based off the little edit sample box there, you choose the zones that you want, and you can create a ton of these, and you can also delete them if you're done with them. So we add a new zone, you put that somewhere, right, and you can actually scale these as well so it's not just that same box I can make it really really tiny and I can go back through I simply hit the delete button and that's it refresh the screen and then we're go good to go with this all right so hopping back in with the software here you actually get to assign like I said on the top key here but it's stuff I wouldn't actually do which is kind of odd I don't think I would ever assign a macro key to the top button there although you have the option for it I, I don't know what you would use it for maybe cycling between profiles on this but you have a whole list of commands that you can actually mess with with this it's just not something I've gotten into um, and I think most people probably aren't going to mess with that beyond that we get to change the acoustics you do get to mess with surround sound it sounded weird to me I didn't I don't mess with it but you do get to change the volume based off where that pitch is supposed to be coming from or that sound is supposed to be coming from and then we have our different presets on the EQ here. You get to do your own if you want as well. That's something that when I saw some of the initial reviews, they were like, the bass is too heavy. Well, you can actually change that now, which is really, really cool. You also can lock these profiles so it actually does it across all of the different things that you're going to do versus it being game dependent. So that's something that you can do. And like I said, you can change this to other games and then create your own kind of profile for that game and it has to be the ones that they have on here unfortunately otherwise it's just a general there are games that they tout with this we have doom we have no man's sky destiny 2 and we have i think wolfenstein um, i haven't had the best of luck with this stuff personally i've had more problems with trying to deal with this than anything we have prey and arc survival as well so there's a ton of upside. I love these speakers and I can't say that enough. But one of the things that I don't like and it's kind of my biggest complaint, the games that they have listed here, those are the ones that give me problems in terms of having light sync. And really they were showcasing these games as like, hey, these actually we've kind of optimized the software so that they're going to have a cooler experience. And I've just experienced more problems with that a lot of times it just doesn't work at all and that's kind of a disappointing thing as these are kind of touted as flagship games for this software and the good news is like right here you're seeing me play doom i just created a profile that kind of mimicked what the software was doing anyway so screen sampling i cannot get it to work with this i've tried looking on all the different forms to fix it and every now and then it does work but for the most part it just doesn't but with the audio sampler here i actually have it so that it's going to mimic, based off the sounds and things like that, kind of the profile that they had with this. I experienced more problems on my ultra wide, which is something I do want to note. If you do have an ultra wide speaker, this gave me more problems on that than the 32 inch monitor that I have here. It worked 
just far less and the screen sampling doesn't want to work for whatever reason as much on an ultra wide monitor now with the 32 inch regular monitor here i've had better luck but it is something that i do want people to be aware of with this as well it doesn't work with no man's sky that was kind of a letdown because the colors in that game look so good <laughs> but i've gotten it to work it's just sporadic but for the most part i just on a regular basis i can't get it to work the audio sampler works really really good and the other thing that i've noticed with it in terms of like people are talking about on the forums like we'll turn it off and on unplug it like when you run through those base things every now and then i can get it to work it just doesn't last and i'm not going to do that every single time so i've kind of defaulted to creating my own either fixed lights breathing lights or i have it so it's just on the audio sampler here which i really really like so the good news is you have those backups, right? If it doesn't happen to work, but I'm playing Subnautica below zero and I'm actually using the screen sampler here. So when it does work, it works very, very well. It's such a different experience and it just adds that extra layer of immersion to any game. Now, outside of the games that they've kind of touted as being their flagship games, the only other game that I've had an issue with is actually Red Dead Redemption 2, which gives me kind of the same problems, but things I've read on that actually just say that actually has to do with their audio drivers a little bit. So it works every now and then, but if it doesn't, I actually just switch over to the audio sampler or I end up doing just breathing or fixed lights with that. So this looks really, really good. I enjoy this. It's one of those things where it's just a different kind of level of immersion with this. And the lights are actually mimicking any of the zones that you're creating on screen. So wherever you place those zones, it's actually going to try to mimic that exact color palette. Now you can notice maybe it's a millisecond or two behind, but for the most part, it picks up on it. It's very, very fast and reactive with this. So it looks good. It's not only gonna do it with games though, it's actually going to do it with anything that you have on screen. So initially when I turned it on, you guys saw earlier, that was actually just based off the, of the background that I have on my desktop. If I'm playing a movie, if I'm playing a video off of YouTube, whatever it is, it's going to actually mimic that same zone based off of that as well. So I'm going to showcase part of the Ghostbuster trailer here so you guys can see that. I'm not going to play the audio with it, but it will do it with videos as well. So that is really, really cool. All right, so let's talk about what I like about these speakers. Let's talk about the good stuff here. So it's an amazing sound quality. It's phenomenal. Whether or not you're using surround sound, it just sounds really, really good. In fact, I think this is way more power than most people are going to need at the 240 watts. Now, I have a house, but if you have an apartment, you're surely not going to blast this at 100%. Everybody's going to be able to hear it, and you're probably going to get kicked out of your apartment or the cops called on you. G-Hub is really easy to use and I prefer that. I definitely recommend if you get this, get G-Hub. Don't mess with the old software. LightSync is worth it in my opinion. It is really, really cool when it works, which is the vast majority of the time. It's just these handful of games that don't like it. Bluetooth works great and I like that. Keep in mind with that, the light stuff isn't going to work with Bluetooth that I've been able to actually have happen. But it is one of those things that be mindful of the fact that once it's connected anytime you go to play something off of your phone it's going to try to play it off of the logitech speakers again so i tested it and essentially then just turned it off i don't want to mess with it but if you're having a house party or something like that you can surely use these as your speakers for that party with this the other cool thing too i just want to make a quick side note when you plug in a headphone set, right, you're going to use that headphone jack there, the lights will still work with that. It's not working with Bluetooth, but it is going to work with the headphones plugged in, so you don't have to worry about that, which actually is typically how I play. Now on to the bad. These are very, very expensive. At $199, 200 bucks. For some people, that's just going to be far too much to spend on this. I will say, look for those sales because I actually got this on sale for 130 bucks, I believe, on Black Friday. So they are out there. But if you're just going to outright pay for it, I mean, 200 bucks, that's a lot of money with this. And then just to reiterate, the 21 by 9 aspect ratio, the ultra-wide monitors, for whatever reason, it just doesn't work very well with the screen sampling. It works with everything else. It just doesn't work with as many games in terms of the screen sampling compared to the 16 by nine aspect ratio monitors and then what i've already talked about it doesn't work with these flagship
ship games most of the time with the light sync. Works with everything else, just not the light sync, and that's kind of a letdown. Although these are kind of older games, like I don't play Doom, and especially with Doom Eternal coming out, I really don't play Destiny 2 anymore. I do play No Man's Sky quite a bit still, so that's kind of a letdown. But other than that, that's really my only complaints is the price, and when it doesn't work, it just sucks because you've paid for this. And that's really just with light sync. Other than that, I've had zero problems with these speakers. So that is it. Let's go ahead and wrap up this video. All right, so to wrap this video up here, I think these are phenomenal speakers. I am so happy that I actually finally purchased them. I definitely recommend looking for these on a sale. So the 200 price is probably pretty steep for a lot of people, but when you can get them on sale, whether that's Black Friday like I got them or anything else like that, I mean, 130 bucks, I think that's a pretty good deal for this. You may even find some used on eBay that are in really, really good shape. Overall though, if the price point isn't an issue for you, these are just something I think everybody's going to enjoy with the lighting effects and light sync integrates you into the game much more than I even anticipated. It's just a really, really cool function. Yeah, it has its quirks every now and then. Maybe it doesn't work with a game, but you can always change it to something else. And maybe if you don't even want that light sync, you can actually do it where it's breathing, it's a fixed color, anything like that. Now, it's going to add a lot of flair to potentially a rig that you have that already has a bunch of just LEDs and RGB lighting all over it, but this is just kind of that next step with your rig, in my opinion. Sound quality is phenomenal, but taking those lights and integrating them into it, it just brings that next level of that kind of PC gamer experience that everybody wants. So that is it, everybody. If you like the video, hit the like button for me. If you want to continue to follow along with all of my content, hit the subscribe button for me. Thanks so much for watching.